The pandemic got us into a reflective space and made us look inward to see what we can do for the world at large. As a self-expression coach, I became a catalyst for women and started Vani, a one-on-one coaching program for women on finding their voice, to speak up, to be visible. As a storyteller, I spotted that there were many ordinary people amongst us leading extraordinary lives, making a difference to the world, and they needed to be heard. Thus was born You and I with Rashmi Shetty, where amazing personal journeys with their uniqueness and individuality are showcased. A reaffirmation of the fact, open your eyes wider, the world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. Our guest today on this Mother's Day special is the inspirational Ashwini Angadi. Her vision to make a world full of happiness allowed her to go beyond her challenge of visual impairment to become a motivational change maker. Ashwini is one among the three people selected from India for the Queen's Young Leader Award in June 2015 and was honoured by the Queen at the Buckingham Palace. She decided to dedicate her life for the cause of the visually and mentally handicapped and started Beliku Academy, a free residential school for the visually impaired and mentally handicapped children from the economically weaker section. Her personal struggles and achievements are a great encouragement to all, especially to the physically challenged globally. She believes getting education is only 50% of human life but helping and giving back to society will make one's life complete. Listen as this mother shares her journey to the social change maker she is recognized as today, celebrating life and the soul, understanding the difference between permanent and temporary happiness, and her dream of increasing the number of children in her academy to 250 and giving employment to a lot of women making them self-employed by teaching them and training them to make cloth and paper bags. Hi Ashwini, such a pleasure to welcome you on You and I with Rashmi Shetty. I'm very eager and curious to know what the journey of little Ashwini was to the Ashwini Angadi that the world knows today. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much for your warm welcome. The little Ashwini had more struggles and challenges. And of course, the little Ashwini even had the fun and everything. I born in a village called Chillagurkich in Ballari district. Born with the great gift of God, that's vision impairment. The vision impairment now As an Ashwini Angadi, yes, it was a gift. But when I was little Ashwini, it was a curse for my parents and everyone. So uh, when I born there, and um, it was a great challenge for my parents to admit me to the schools. When they asked for the schools for the admission, they did not give because of my disability. Then they brought me to uh, Bangalore. And they admitted me to Shri Ramana Maharshi Academy for the Blind. It's in Bangalore, J.P. Nagar. It was a residential uh, school where uh, only visually impaired uh, will be educated and trained. So I admitted to that school when I was four years old. So at that time, usually parents, children expect parents' love and care. But due to my future Brighton, my parents put me to that uh, school and uh, I had a very good education and yeah, mm, yeah, good training and everything because now I am at this position because the education which I got from that school. So after the, uh, when I was studying in 10th standard, I was uh, suffering from um, brain fever and doctor told me that I won't be alive for many days so at that time doc, even though the doctor told me that i need rest and be, but i did not want that rest i just wanted to pass my 10th standard exam because 
usually 10 standard exam means that it will be like oh, it's a dream um, uh, results for all the persons all mm -hmm. the students there so uh, i wanted to clear my 10 standard exam so i um, went to exam center with um, this one uh, drips and everything doctors were there and uh, i used to uh, study a uh, whole night at the hospital and used to come to exam center and write the exams and thereby i scored uh, 85.7 um uh, uh, result in 10th standard exam oh my god okay yes. that's quite an um, achievement <laughs> yes then i was uh, even then uh, once i got the result i used to go for regular checkup and they said wow everything got cured how then the, mm -hmm. if i wouldn't have write, written the exam i think i uh, by the by being depressed i would have lost my life so because i wrote exam I'm, i was very happy and i had very good uh, life there so i could you know cure my brain fever whatever so uh, this is my the school day journey and i did my poc in nmkb college there there was no um, visually impaired student there i was the only visually impaired student in the college so it was great tough for me to you know mobilize from my home to college and to college from my college to home uh, it was little challenge um, but somehow i overcame all the challenges and little challenge with the reading and writing because mm. there were no uh, books or whatever but uh, what were your uh, subjects ashwini in uh, first pu uh, puc we had uh, history economics logic and sociology okay okay yeah logic was my favorite subject because i used to talk a lot and i wanted to <laughs> you know <laughs> learn more with you know laws and everything okay my okay. gaming mind game subject yeah. where i had to use my mo more of my mindset and how this one tactics and everything okay so um there i had no audio books braille and everything Mm -hmm. so i used to talk to my lecturers regarding this and i, I received very good cooperation from the lecturers and they give they used to give me the previously the notes mm -hmm. and everything so i used to come to my home and uh, uh, request my neighbors to read for me and you know study at the night mm -hmm. so this is my my journey and my pu college and when i came to degree to maharani's college i took arts there then there also i used i stayed in hostel in maharani's college there also i was the only visually impaired uh, student in the college mm -hmm. so and the same issue what i faced in uh, puc college apart from the mobility mm -hmm. because i stayed in the hostel mm -hmm. so the books and reading and writing was a issue for me and again i went and consulted uh, management in the uh, the uh, college to provide me with the braille books or audio books whatever Mm -hmm. and because of my uh, this one um, the consult they they formed me a, a committee for disability and i was the leader for the uh, mm -hmm. committee where we had uh, 10 uh, persons with uh, all kinds of disability in my class i was the only visually impaired there are other visually impaired in other class seniors mm -hmm. and uh, they got all the uh facilities like computers with screen reader scanned books hmm real books audio books and everything they got it and i used i uh, was the person who provided all those things computers with the screen reader i uh, told my college people where to get what to get screen reader i installed uh, them and audio books i myself went and asked the people to record it for the students at the college mm -hmm. even i did not get the facilities but my juniors have got mm. because, uh, mm. because of my this was the little ashwini's experience no i have a question here ashwini where was your confidence and courage coming from because you were very easily the leader wherever you went uh, <laughs> you went up to teachers and asked for help many yes. people hesitate to do that where did you find yes. your courage ashwini because i i don't know uh, if you ask me i want i to have the same question uh, because many of them have studied in my college and nobody have taken this initiative mm. why did i want to do this is 
exactly everybody shows the sympathy and everybody shows oh if you can't do project that's okay if you are, you are blind you don't do the project so if you don't if you don't want to do any project that's okay and if you don't try qt test that's okay we'll give you marks it's not like that we are we are getting the education because of the because the purpose of doing education is to learn something and implement those things when in the future wow okay you didn't think of all this no, for no, what no, was no, driving no. you no i did not think all this but i am very much competitor i mean this means oh. i was I mean i want to get a very good marks compared to my other friends like that <laughs> so uh, my from, from the beginning i had a um, passion of uh, uh, getting recognized everyone should recognize me and everyone should uh, say my name like that uh, you know feeling right. like that, yes yes like yeah. that uh, the character i have uh, from the beginning so oh. this made me to you know uh, take the initiatives so that's what drove you even in your 10th standard in spite of your brain fever uh, yes exam. yes yes of course yes of course yes so you must be like a role model in school right who came to exam with drips and uh, wrote the exam and really did so well with such wonderful marks yes everyone at the hospital were like uh, uh, uh pumping everyone was crying and everyone was thinking uh, taking attention about their you know mm. uh, this is whatever but yeah. i was the only student uh, you know studying taking my friends help to study everything so mm. in that way everyone started recognizing me in that hospital that was also an advantage for me too yeah yeah since everyone oh. recognized me everyone appreciated me and that made me to you know study more oh so what did this uh, ashwini with so much of drive and getting all the recognition and leadership wherever she went after your graduation what did you do see after my graduation actually my aim, main aim was to earn money, so much of money mm. because uh, because i belong to a poor background poor economical mm. background family and mm. i wanted to earn money i want to uh, take cabs i don't want to drive in bus i had so much of a dream of getting a luxurious life yeah. uh, and for that i i, I knew you know, i'll get luxurious life when i uh, into corporate sector mm-hmm. that to at a very very big uh, very big position right? like hr whatever mm-hmm. so for that i need to learn english but i did, i was very poor in english mm-hmm. um, and now also i don't speak uh, very good english but yeah but manageable but at that time Please. i was <laughs> i was very poor in english so i joined enable india it's an ngo who mm-hmm. uh, gives a training for a uh, computer training for visually impaired uh, uh, people mm-hmm. so once i get graduation i joined enable india and received career centric computer training mm-hmm. so uh, along with the computers i was able to learn english um, it was like two months course uh, mm-hmm. in two months course we cannot learn any any language, language it, yeah. it needs more experience and more mm-hmm. uh, people practice course. yeah uh, yes so um, i joined uh, uh, computers i learned and everything and i want to i told them that i want to you know, become and i want to uh, work in hr department so i i joined as an hr recruiter i was earning 25 plus um k after the two month training you got this job uh after two months i also did some other courses ah, okay. like uh, life skills and employability mm. skills there mm. i used to get you know um the work mm. like uh pre uh like before we going to mm-hmm. any company we'll mm-hmm. be having pre assignments correct as correct. if them working as an hr recruiter the same thing mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. uh, sourcing profile or whatever mm-hmm. so uh, they are because i was my must be the competitor no there mm-hmm. so i uh, that two, two months i did that, that. Mm-hmm. then i joined him and see company as an hr recruiter i was earning 25000 per okay. month okay. then after uh, yes 
then i came to i resigned the job and came to this field uh, oh okay so what prompted you to move out of hr and uh, what currently are you doing that is still keeping you so alive and full of life six months i worked as an hr recruiter Mm -hmm. then after that i um uh, one day i was when i was gone shopping with my friends on weekends so i saw a good two visually impaired girls crying on footpath then i asked them about their depression they said mm -hmm. that though we had a huge property we are thrown out of my family once my, their parents got expired Mm. they are thrown out of the family from their brothers and sister in laws mm. so then i asked that's okay if you are thrown that's fine because don't stay with the negative people don't stay with the people who discourage you mm. then come with me i will help you to get a good job then mm. they said no no we haven't studied anything mm. we are in the trades then they said Mm -hmm. um then why don't and then the next question would be absolutely why don't you get education like they said my parents did not allow me to go to any schools they did not want to study in a blind school or whatever mm -hmm. and first of all they don't want to exhibit their blindness with the others that's what their intention of the parents now because of their mistake the mm -hmm. the girls are, are struggling mm -hmm. so then i consulted some ngo and helped them to get a career training self mm. career training or whatever mm. then now yeah they are good very good position now so okay. it happened and uh, mm. this made me to you know uh, this prompted me to uh, come to a um, disability field and mm. then i was called from leonard chashar disability organization Mm -hmm. so it's london based organization they were running a project called young voices it's mm -hmm. a global campaign for young people with disabilities mm -hmm. they used to run a project over 25 countries mm -hmm. and uh, in india uh, in india uh, the project was running in uh, ranchi bhopal delhi mumbai and karnataka oh so okay. at the same time the uh, the national facilitator who was leading this project in india as um, uh, got uh, resigned mm. and they were searching for uh, that for that responsibility mm. and they caught me and they called me and they said you have to take the uh, responsibility this is so beautiful and how did they get in touch with you like it was a common connect that put you on or they heard about you read about you and that's how mm, no no um i was doing doing volunteership for them uh, every second sunday monthly second sunday they, they had a meeting okay and one uh, two of my friends were volunteers there mm -hmm. and i also had been there uh, as a member uh, mm -hmm. just i used to go and advise a uh, people mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. to do and what are the challenges that in karnataka we are facing you uh, know for uh, this whatever okay. <laughs> so i used to going whatever i can work i whenever i have work, time i used to go and work with them mm -hmm. so that made um, i mean anyhow they have uh, recognized me they know what how do i work and mm -hmm. they called me that you are going to a leader then they said that uh, i told no no it is impossible because i used to travel i i should travel alone yeah. to ranchi bhopal delhi mumbai and i used to find people there and uh, you know fight for you know um, solution for the problem mm -hmm. so my parents firstly they disagreed because i they don't want to me to go and you know uh, get into a trouble there yes alone hmm. so alone so hmm. i just somehow convinced and they agreed and yes now i traveled and who um, came with you like you had somebody no, from no, the organization no 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 i used to travel alone wow okay yes and there usually if i go to aranchi there will be some members yeah 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 to, yeah. to help me with whatever mm. work mm. i want to do but i was the leader i used mm. to guide them to, to take somewhere and find out 
uh, the problems of uh, persons with disability as who are in some problem. Mm-hmm. So I used to go to the each houses, knock the door of each houses, and uh, ask um, give the solutions or whatever. Okay, so here you are after six months of work. You were selected in this position, and uh, life was busy planning for you the recognition that you deserved at that point of time. So, yes, yes. how long did you continue in this position of being a national head uh, here? National uh, facilitator. Yes, the same six months. Same, same the six months. The same six months. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, every time wherever I go, I only do only six months. Okay. <laughs> okay. And after six happens. months, yes. After six months, I I was recognized uh, from United Nations organization as a for their felicitation as young achiever, youth achiever. Okay. Okay. And then I went to New York and yeah. received award for the work I did there. Okay. Okay. It was great challenging for a girl actually. Yes, because yes. going to people and talking to people, sometimes they'll be behave like uh, they have harsh behavior with us. Correct. We have to get tolerate of all those things. It's, it was not so easy. So yeah. So said, uh, yes, I am. Okay. Can I, you can you just uh, share one of the most unforgettable instances, uh, Ashwini, in that six months that you were national facilitator <laughs> and traveling all over? Do you have any one story that remains? Close to your heart? Uh, yes, there are many stories. Yeah. But I'll, I would like to tell uh, one story mm-hmm. uh, which actually made, it actually satisfied me mm-hmm. um, yeah, great, uh, mm-hmm. with a greater extent. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I traveled a, a, a ranchi. Mm-hmm. There was a village and mm-hmm. I found a, a 18 year old girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was at home. For, mm. uh, since many years and she was taken care of by her uh, uncle and aunt mm. so she lost her legs I mean, she was polio attacked girl okay. but she was um, she was made to stay in a dark room with no lights nothing no no communication with the people nothing else mm. so and they did not want uh, to tell people that they have a, uh, a disabled girl in the house mm. but they are very uh, rich people mm. so but one of my friends said yeah here there is a girl when i went and asked they said they just pushed me out they said there is no girl like this, no girl. Then I said, no, I know all the government regulations, government act. Yes. And if you if you don't tell me, if I find that girl in your house, you will be in the jail. Yes. So then when I said that, okay, they called me and they showed me that girl. And when I switched on the light, she started screaming. Yes. And I felt, oh my God, I am a visually impaired, can't see lights and this one. I cannot even find out where the dark and light. Mm. But you can enjoy the light. But these people have taken your uh, rights. Mm. So then I convinced her. I counseled her for many days. And uh, now she, 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 went, she started working in a gar- garments factory. Um, she started working with the salary of 6,000. Okay. So she, her name is Sumaya Sultana and she is independent from her family now. Mm. She got married and she has kids and everything. She is, she is very happy now. Okay. So like this, we have many stories to okay. you know, tell. And you document all these stories somewhere? So I used to put it in a Facebook. I used to, oh. because to my managers, I used to tell you know, videos and photos because yes. I want to show my show my work with the yes. transparency. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, great. So you got the UN recognition, and then yes. post that. By then, you were still in the job, or you had quit? No, 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 no. And then I was requested to stay in London, work. Uh, 
if for the organization, then they said, oh, it is. And I received a award for sort of women, uh, protecting or uh, helping my Indian, Indians mm -hmm. uh, disabled. Mm -hmm. So I used to, I must want to continue my you know job. Then I started my own NGO called Ashwini Angadi Trust. Because mm -hmm. I, I kept my own, my name for the organization to, so that it alarms me a lot. It alerts me to work more mm -hmm. because I am not inspired by the successors. So mm -hmm. I did not, uh, you know, name my NGO any successor's name. Mm -hmm. So I did, I named my name for the trust mm -hmm. and I, I now I'm providing um, uh, education for uh, 50 uh, poor uh, students, poor and under, underprivileged students. Mm -hmm. Out of the 50 students, we have 25 visually impaired students and mm -hmm. 25 are non-visually impaired students so that the mutual understanding between visually impaired and non-visually impaired students will beg uh, begin. Mm -hmm. So it, it so that it will help me to create an inclusive society. Mm -hmm. Only visually impaired students need the training for reading and writing in Braille. Yes. Mm. Only for that purpose, we should not segregate or exclude them from the society, the other society. No? Mm. So this is my unique and main idea of you know, starting this school. Okay. So it is like inclusion in the true sense of the term. And yes, yes. And who are these children? Where do they come from? Uh, it's, it's, it's a residential school. So okay. people from a uh, different uh, uh, part of Karnataka, mm. like Balari, Raichur, Gulbarga, mm. almost to 200, 300 kilometers from distance, uh, mm. they'll come here. And okay. uh, they are very poor economical background families. And mm. some of them are orphans. Mm. People, when they see other uh, children playing or if they don't know anyone, they'll call me and they, they, they inform me about the family and the students. And okay. I will, I myself go and pick the students from there. Okay. Okay. So yes. however far in Karnataka people call you from, you go there and then select mm. the student yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, to help you around to run the school, uh, I'm sure you have teachers as well, right? So do yes. you train these teachers on, and uh, when you're saying inclusive schools, that means both children who have sight and uh, the ones who don't are mm -hmm. taught in the same class. So how does the teacher get trained to handle both the children? Yes, uh, we have uh, two special educators mm -hmm. who knows uh, Braille. Okay. So usually what happens uh, when these pe uh, non people who doesn't have, who don't have sight, when they go for painting or other thing, mm -hmm. these uh, visually impaired students, they learn Braille. Mm -hmm. So when they come to fifth standard, Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll be expert in reading and writing. The visually impaired students will be expert in reading and writing com competitively uh, with these sighted students. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that uh, it won't be need a separate classes for uh, when they come to fifth standard. Mm -hmm. Only yes, uh, doing something related to math, how to write math. Sometimes we need special educators. So other. Other times we no need of uh, you know uh, separate teachers or separate classes for these kids. Because um, you were fortunate, Ashwini, to have uh, been included, whether it is in college or later at work, yes, uh, yes, into yes. a space like that. Is that the inspiration behind you putting the school together? What was the reason you decided to have a school like this? where uh, you combine the two so that the children know what it is to live in an inclusive society? No, the first inspiration of mine is that's what I inspired only, only from the failures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing is, uh, see, I, I uh, accommodated in a hostel when I mm -hmm. was four years old. Correct. Okay. 
if all, uh, if my school my village have encouraged me to get an education i wouldn't have been separated from the parents at the early age mm. Uh, so because of their uh, rejection i was uh, you know i used to sub- I, i was i had no chance i used to miss my parents at the age mm. and the other thing is when i was uh, searching for the job mm. and i oh, i almost given interview in many companies okay and then they they said you are very good we are very com- uh, competitive compared to others but we are we, you are we are, we are not able to uh, take you for the job then they said what why what is the reason behind this and mm. they said no no you are because you are visually impaired so how will you mobilize from here and there and we have delicate glass doors and if you break it up that's okay uh, our uh, this thing will spoil but if you have any if you face any any issues health issues that we will be the you know responsible uh, responsible for that mm. uh, then they said no no not at all because once if you show it to me i can easily mobilize and i can use my key even though i told everything since due to lack of awareness they did not uh, take me for the company and for the job mm. if 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 my brother or my sister was there in the same position they would they would have took me uh, without any um, problem yeah okay yeah. because they knew me what me and what is my limitations what is my strength and uh, everything they know me about so due to lack of awareness uh, i was rejected in some of the companies mm. so those things should not be there if you have inclusive society people will be easily understanding about you know how people with vision people with visually impaired are it mm. is not mandatory to show their show them the sympathy mm. we should be empathized with them Very. so then only uh, they can get into this life and celebrate this life like others so true yes how old is your school now ashwini is it as old as your trust was the uh, the first activity of the trust the school itself yes the first activity of the trust is school belaku academy is a school name hmm. yeah, it was founded in 2015 hmm. now we are constructing a new building it is under process hmm. uh, so we are trying to accommodate uh, 250 students from all around karnataka as of now there are how many 100 students 50 50 50 50 okay yes. so there are 50 students and now you want to increase the number yes so i love the name belaku so yes uh, when it comes to belaku is it the inner light that needs to be lit up first before externally we see what is happening yes exactly the same yeah so how, what was the reason behind keeping such a beautiful name how would you and what would you want to tell people when it comes to having a dream having a vision having the long sightedness to understand the need for an inclusive society belaku means a uh, purpose of me is uh, to just tell mm-hmm. belaku is not only to see uh, the lights or attracted lights or whatever Mm. and see some making movies or whatever belaku mm. is for me a belaku is celebrating the inner happiness of the soul we are only concentrating about the happiness of the body mm. when we see something attractive yeah but uh, the main thing which i wanted to say is celebrate the souls satisfaction celebrate the soul's happiness is a belaku okay and how does the soul celebrate only while getting satisfied with our life because exactly. i am very much i am very much happy i am very much uh, i am i am very much satisfied i am very much happy because what i am doing is doing best hmm hmm if i'm not doing my work best i won't be satisfied and i i can't be celebrated my life yeah yeah 
and uh, does see now you're doing a, such a big difference to those 50 children who are in the academy so yes. uh, celebration of the soul this is such a beautiful statement ashwini such a lovely phrase Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if you say the word belaku means celebration of the soul yes. uh, it it takes it at a very different a level of living your life and leading your life itself right yes yes so how can you make sure that everyone around you lives that life wherein uh, they celebrate from their soul rather than the physical body so if uh, what is it that you'd like to tell on how to get in touch with that soul and celebrate with the soul. What what all can you do to celebrate with the soul? What do you do, Ashwini, to be so happy all the time? <laughs> no, I always um, think about what is permanent and what is temporary. Mm -hmm. Okay, if okay. I go and eat something, I will. I know that it is a temporary, but it's not like I don't want to eat that. Since it is a temporary, I should not eat. Or what what is the purpose of eating? It's not like. But we should know what is temporary and what is permanent. Hmm. what makes us permanent happy and what makes us temporary happiness hmm. if you go and watch the movie for three hours of course it will make us happy but it will be very temporary we should be know we should know that and i'm just giving the example exactly. we should know what is we should list out of uh, what is temporary and what is permanent hmm. many of us we don't know what makes us happy hmm. we we always feel oh once we build a big house we'll we 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 make it we will make happy and sometimes the some some astrologer if they are believers of astrologer some they come they'll come and they say oh this is the why you mule we we did something this is not yeah. the right construction go break this break that in that building of house we were happy but again we we were we became unhappy because of that why mule agni mule and those mm -hmm. stuffs mm -hmm. And again, we break it and again, we reconstruct it. And someone says, Ayo, earlier we built it. No, it was very nice to look. Now, not is not that nice to look. Then we again, Ayo, what, we keep on feeling unhappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should know what is temporary happiness and what is permanent happiness. And we should work on the permanent happiness. And temporary happiness, of course, we should enjoy. Because we are living in this society, but we should know that is temporary. Mm -hmm. Okay, my temporary happiness is like uh, eating Golgoppa is my temporary happiness. I love eating Golgoppas. Mm -hmm. But I, it's not like I don't eat at all. I eat. I enjoy it. For six puris. Mm -hmm. Then I'll come back. Mm -hmm. That's it. But the permanent happiness of mine is you know, at least, uh, you know, uh, achieving my goal. What is the goal which I have? Uh, mm -hmm. I want to give employment to 10,000, you know, 10,000 uh, women with disabilities. Now mm -hmm. I, I, I work for the project. So mm -hmm. again, it will come a temporary and permanent. If mm -hmm. I work, if I work for the proposals, writing and submitting to a, a person who help us with this, I'll be very happy. At mm -hmm. least a person has received that proposal and he is working for that. Again, it is temporary because after that I have to work for, you know, constructing and, uh, you know, distribution of my products, marketing products and everything. Mm -hmm. So if I uh, go on, if I, if I work for step by step, I'll be very happy. Mm -hmm. And the final happiness will be once uh, I give employment for 10,000 a woman with disabilities <laughs> when i'm working for it i'm celebrating my life okay. every day okay so uh, simply put if you're going to give me a definition of happiness what is your definition of happiness satisfying our soul is a happiness okay so the quest of life uh, according to you is soul happiness yes yes okay Wow, that's so beautiful. So apart from Belico Academy, is there any other activity of the trust that uh, you would want to share uh, with us, Ashwini, now? Yes, Belico Academy is a school. Uh, it's a school, of course, I told you. Mm -hmm. I want to accommodate 250 students and give them free education mm -hmm. along with uh, other activities like sports, uh, Bharatanatyam dance, 
uh, classical music and everything they are mm-hmm. good at and they are trained mm-hmm. apart from that i just want to uh, you know uh, start a project for a woman with uh, different abilities self employment so mm-hmm. i have given uh, i concentrated on uh, education but uh, what about people who are who don't have education that do they are disabled mm-hmm. so i want to give a uh, give job for them so firstly i want to um, train them in self employment and mm-hmm. give them a job this is my other uh, project which i'm going to start whoever wants to wish to help me it is very much uh, you are most welcome to you know help me with this because it's my dream okay and what kind of help are you looking for when you're saying whoever wishes to help so help uh, i want people who can help me with uh, marketing my products i am initiate my project initiation will be uh, uh, making a, a bag covers that means now okay. we are avoiding the plastic no mm-hmm. so uh, the cloth bags we are uh, making it mm-hmm. and paper bags mm-hmm. we are concentrating on packing industry some mm-hmm. people who can help me with you know marketing those uh, products that will be really fine and i can give uh, i can make people to celebrate their lives more lives mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so is this project already one that has started or you're likely to start this project we are going to start in two months in two months the proposal and everything is finished project writing is also finished and along with this i am also doing my mba mm-hmm. and i am now from tomorrow my exams are going to start oh okay so after the after the exam and uh, this uh June, July, I'm going to start this project. I'm mm. only waiting for the people who can come forward and tell me that we are going to help uh, help in marketing the products. Okay, so in marketing, both cloth bags and paper bags. Paper bags, yes. Okay, and uh, as far as your school is concerned, currently, do the children have all these extracurricular activities that you spoke about dance music or you intend to put that in the bigger school when more children come no no they are currently they they are get training in that uh, classical music and classical yes, and bharatanatyam and everything couple of our students have scored highest uh, uh, marks in uh, hindustani classical music exam conducted by state government Ooh, ooh, wow. yes some of them are preparing for junior bharatanatyam dance yeah. again yes. at the state level exam they're looking yeah, at state the- level exam and one of our students had been to a uh, national level in chess mm-hmm. yes uh, these are some of uh, little achievements okay. in four years okay so uh, when it comes to ashwini When Ashwini looks back at all of this, hmm. this is a part of Ashwini where she's making a difference to society. And yes. what about Ashwini's personal life? Ashwini's personal life, yes, personal and professional both are combined here. <laughs> Because I love to stay with the you know children, like to play. Hmm. Now I'm speaking like this. You come and see me when I'm with children. Yeah. I'll be a little child compared to uh, others <laughs> yeah okay. and i have a little daughter along with 30 30 children i have one more uh, with my uh, daughter who is a How blood relative she? she is just uh, uh, one year in oh. when may on may 14th she will be completing one, one. year she is first 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 birthday Oh wow. Okay, yes. so this week this Sunday coming Sunday is Mother's Day Ashwini. And oh yes. <laughs> I think uh, that's eight one week before your daughter's birthday. Uh, yes. But I think mothers like you are a huge inspiration to people around because you tell us what joy is all about. It's not yes. about you and you alone but everyone around you is so happy just because you are alive 
and uh, <laughs> this is so beautiful okay uh, and my daughter is also like she is also god gifted child she is mm-hmm. also visually impaired and okay. but that's that's absolutely fine no problem for me at all mm-hmm. um she is, she is now uh, i am i am spending much of my time with her to you know do whatever she, what makes her happy Mm-hmm. do you know uh, uh, she she uh, she plays an instrument that means only she she try to uh, play the instrument as ever she uh, as ever she likes likes huh yeah yeah she at mm-hmm. least she plays a re ga ma pa oh, really which instrument on keyboard 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 oh. she she plays Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Since Which, two and a half months. Are you into music, or your husband's into music? How did my, she? My my husband. My husband into music, but uh, she stays in town. Okay. Okay. Uh, she is. She he is working as um, government high school teacher. Teacher. Huh. Uh, but the keyboard and all. I I little I know. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. When I when I just gave it to her, huh? uh, something she was playing, beating on it, and everything she was doing it. Huh? now i don't know how she could do uh, when i place her finger in a shadja sa hmm. okay she keeps on playing re ga ma pa da pa da <laughs> now she herself go takes her finger in into that sa shadja wow okay uh, yes <laughs> wow this this must be so magical for you ashwini yes uh, yes and as we slowly start moving into reflective spaces and looking back at life uh, yes. my question to you is the last two years with the pandemic was challenging to the whole world everybody stepped back and was wondering how to handle themselves everyone went into pause mode what is it with ashwini that altered in the last Again. two years again ashwini always thinks of the situation and ashwini always wants to uh, know uh, people who are in trouble anyhow my my students they all went home and some of them orphans they were here very few students are here at our nurse today in our institution it was not that uh, problematic for me so i am just co- i have concentrated on people who are in actual trouble so when i look into that i got a uh, uh, family with different abilities who are uh, thrown out of the job because of the pandemic who are working in garments who are working in some mm-hmm. other things mm-hmm. they were they they lost their jobs mm-hmm. and what i did every month i used to help them with provisions milk rent and uh, with the support of some donors okay I, i strived hard to get the donations for them and somehow i i i could able to you know help them help. now also i'm doing it mm. but that that actually made me to start the other project of mine i'm help i'm actually supporting them some 100 families here mm mm-hmm. uh, every month you know uh, provisions earlier we were helping them for uh, provisions milk and rent mm-hmm. so now i am also facing hard time to help mm. them for milk and rent now i'm helping them for you know provision mm. so mm. it is not a right thing to do at least we should make them to earn on their own own yeah how yeah. how many times we have we can give them mm. Mm. Uh, so instead of providing them by courtesy showing mm. courtesy mm. we can make them independent by giving them employment because mm. they are they are well versed they can they can do work they can mm. work Mm-hmm. so this at least uh, now 100 women are ready to get employment oh. so i'm just uh, want to give them wow wow yes and uh, when we we have moved to that part of the conversation which is yes. about three life lessons ashwini what are three life lessons that you would like to leave us with the three life lessons which i have in- implemented usually mm. people will be having different uh, life lessons but my life life lesson is learn from the failures mm. and think about 
permanent and temporary happinesses and work for short term and long term goals wow. and uh, i always uh, believe on swami vivekananda he is mm-hmm. my hero mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. and he leaves uh, two models for indians mm-hmm. um, one is sacrifice and other is charity Mm-hmm. we can we are not god or we are not uh, we are like ordinary people we cannot mm-hmm. sacrifice i don't know i am mm-hmm. not sacrifice anything to uh, i am i'm not sacrifice anything mm-hmm. but i am doing little charity that's it mm-hmm. that's it um then he yeah, also i i i i i just want to uh, live after death mm-hmm. i shouldn't be dead even though i am alive Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. so, and what uh, you're leaving behind is such a beautiful legacy that you will remain alive even after you leave the yes. modern world for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. That's, that's, that's my intention. Wow. Wow. God bless you, Ashwini, because uh, I think a mother like you, a friend like you, a human being like you, is truly an inspiration and honor to have hosted you on you and i with rashmi shetty and uh, people like you give us reason how we should look at our own blessings thank you for being who you are and stay blessed ashwini and thank you very much for your blessings and you have asked very good questions and let i'm very much inspired by your you know communication that the way that you communicate thank you very much thank you ashwini thanks a lot god yes. bless you thank you thank you with that we come to the end of this weekly quest of you and i with rashmi shetty do let us know if you know people who make the world beautiful write in to rashmi.thirdi at gmail.com that is r a s h m i dot t h e t h i r d e y e at gmail dot com. Come, let's explore this amazing world together, both you and I.